Hello everyone, uh, I'm going to talk about today about trunk based development with continuous deployment. First of all I go through what they are and then I have a showcase that how to do code reviews without pull request with trunk based development. So what is trunk based development? Uh, first of all uh, only, only one long living branch matters which is more normally called main or master and uh, in trunk based de development it's also called trunk. Uh, uh, each each uh, environment is deployed from master and with continuous deployment all commits to master of mine are triggering continuous integration and automatic deployments. The mine idea is that developers are doing small commits to the mine and uh, each of those are, are making a new version of the software. If you are uh, and uh, needing to do trunk based development in a bigger scale then you might use uh, uh, feature branches too but they need to be a short living not long living ones. Uh, so uh, what is continuous deployment? For me it is just pushing ambitions to top. Uh, uh, each commit master gets di directly into production with quality assurance and uh, stuff like that of course. Everything is automated, there is no manual steps involved and the lead times from uh, 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 completing a feature to getting it to your customers is, is calculated in minutes. Uh, so how features are then released? Uh, features are released with feature flags. First of all the mine idea for me is that the binary version of my software doesn't really matter. What matters is what are the actual features that my, my uh, end users are using and uh, wh what features there are that could be used. So when I uh, develop a new feature I flag that this is a new feature and, I get, uh, and uh, the feature can go to the production already but it is enabled afterwards like with a soft launch when, when my customers think that okay now this feature is ready for our end users and then we release after it is already in production. Uh, if you want to learn more you could visit that featureflags.io to uh, get more uh, uh, hints about how to do that. So uh, life is hard. Uh, not everything is uh, is just sunshine. Uh, database schema version is really really hard with continuous deployment. Uh, it is easy to uh, a kind of a, uh, with have a mistake to make a version of the database that is not compatible to uh, previous uh, software. If you want to do continuous deployment you need to uh, figure out how to do zero downtown chases and, uh, and basically it means that you have to have two versions of the software wor working uh, with the uh, uh, same version of the database. So, so if you ha need to do database changes they need to all be non-breaking ones and you need to figure out how to do that. And also cross-cutting controls like uh, SD key uh, upgrades are really hard ones. Uh, you need to think them one by one how to do them. There are really no silver bullets for those. And uh, authentication and authorization changes are also, also uh, giving me a headache at time, times. But uh, once they are implemented it's not hard and uh, anymore to update them a bit. But uh, the, uh, to introduce for example new new way to log in system might be hard. Yeah. Uh, deployment frequency is part of a risk management for me so making uh, small changes uh, ultimately means that only only small portion of my software changes and if there are any problems then I know that uh, the breaking uh, of the software was or, or the issues of the so software were caused by the changes that I just did. So I don't need to go weeks or months uh, um, uh, amount of work to, through to figure out what all has changed and uh, what should I do about it. Uh, uh, the more I deploy also the, the more I learn about the release process. So if you think about like uh, uh, like a 
top notch chefs like uh, three Michelin star chefs. They do the same dishes again and again and again and they they learn about the process and they can enhance it and they can perfect their, their uh, dishes like that. The same same goes with the deployment. The more you do it, the better you come at it. You can, you uh, understand where are your uh, weak spots and uh, you learn how to uh, go uh, uh, to how, how to just make them di disappear. And you learn how you end user face your deployments. Do they have a breakage or, or are they happily continuing using the software? And uh, uh, you also learn uh, does your automatic quality assurance gates work? So, so uh, that's a really important fact. You have to uh, uh, look at the, your quality gates and see that if, if you can catch all the issues you are facing before going production. And hey, remember, fail makes us stronger, so don't uh, don't be afraid of it. Uh, the fear, art, uncertainty, and doubt are the main en enemies in, in software business. If we, if we, if we start to uh, think only uh, we are fear, then we don't have courage to do, th to do things, and then, then we end up in you know, Big Bang deployments where we change everything at once and then we don't know any, any, anymore that what caused the issues we are facing. Uh, quality assurance, ha it needs to be top-notch. So, so you have to think about all the small details about what you could test, like a regression test, test unit test, integration test, end-to-end -end test, test that, uh, to catch all the possible errors that you have. Then I advise that you collect some trend data about your code quality with static code analysis, like like how many uh, style issues you have, or how many to-do comments you have in your code, or uh, stuff like that. And uh, uh, check that your code quality doesn't uh, uh, go worse over time. Then uh, after deploying software to one environment, for example, if you have a, a development environment, test environment, and uh, production environment. After a deployment to development env environment, you can do few things after, like a smoke test the application that is there anything, everything okay within the application after releasing this new version. And uh, okay, if I look my monitors, are there new issues uh, in, in my monitor monitors that I should be addressed? And you can uh, skip the test and production deployments if you are seeing problems. But like I said, this needs to be automatic checks. Uh, and one important thing is that uh, you need to shift security left, which means that uh, uh, in, a, in a development process you need to uh, think security uh, beforehand. So I emphasize it in a design pace. Uh, Everything that you can tackle with architecture is good. If you can ch check them in development, it is better. But if you need to have like a separated uh, uh, security engineering team to manually testing, test things before you can go production, then you can't do continuous deployment. Uh, and also code reviews are important. And uh, we will we'll talk about them uh, next. So code reviews in con continuous deployment. So if you want to go get uh, easily around this issue, uh, you can have a pull request and, and uh, make code reviews there. there. The, uh, that means that you use small feature branches, but they really need to be small ones yet again. Uh, but if you don't use uh, branches and pull requests, then uh, I have found out that not many tools support code reviews that, that uh, are done in a master or main branch. So I created my own. So first of all, uh, we, we configure git hooks. Uh, uh, what, what git hooks are? They are something that you can run on your machine or on, on remote machine when some git commands are being run. 
The problem is that uh, normally they are saved in a folder that is not synchronized between uh, different developers. So we change a folder to a one that we can store in Git. And so if every developer runs same Git config for the to for uh, Git hooks, for example, the dot Git hooks folder, then the every developer runs the same Git hooks. So uh, first we configure that use dot Git hooks folder, and then we create a commit message, message pass file that runs a PowerShell script commit message check dot ps1. Uh, so with the commit co commit message check, we enforce a, a, a certain commit format that is aligned with our ticketing system. So, for example, here I create a script that uh, takes, uh, first of all, the commit message file as a parameter. I read the, uh, uh, what is inside the commit message file, which is the commit message itself. And then I figure out what is the ticket prefix that is used in our ticketing system. And then I have also a list of allowed keywords that uh, needs to come after the ticket. So I check with the regex that if, if the commit message was aligned with our, our, our uh, format, which is like core dash one uh, add something. And uh, if it is exit not zero, which, which means for the uh, past that it was success and uh, exit one means failure. And we also print that you had something wrong in it. So uh, here is a quick demo how it looks like. So if I uh, git commit a bad commit message, it uh, prints with red line that uh, you, you have to follow our, our commit message format. And uh, if I make a git commit message score dash 10 at something nicer, then it's, it is a, a success and I can push it to the 10 to the remote. Uh, why we do this is that once we enforce that all the all the commit messages follow the format, we can then uh, list commit messages which are uh, belonging to a certain ticket. And here is a, a, a small helper script that I'm using onwards. So so uh, we get uh, the ticket prefix again. Then we then we use a git lock to grab uh, all the, all the uh, commits that starts with certain ticket that was given, so, so ticket prefix plus the ticket number. And uh, all that matches that, we get a list of commits and uh, uh, we, we reverse the arrow because the, it's, it's in, in a, for me it's in a wrong order. You could skip the reverse if, it, if it's fine that they are like, like a, latest one is first, but, but yeah, I li like the first one is the first. So I take the first commit out and then I also save the commit has for later use. And the same thing for the last commit that I take the last commit and save the commit has for the, lock, uh, the last also. So now I have a, uh, for this ticket, I have the range that first, first commit and the last commit. Then I have uh, uh, two different ways to uh, uh, to uh, to re review it, but uh, uh, first of all, I just uh, saw that now that we have a list of those uh, commit messages, so I can I can uh, run my uh, commit URL script with, uh, for example, that with the parameter two, which means that uh, ticket two, I get a list of commits that says that uh, okay, here is a here is a GitHub link for this commit and, and for, for this second commit, with, which both belong to this, uh, this uh, uh, ticket. So uh, you can easily check them from remote system also, but we have also ways to do it in local machines. So uh, first of all, we can do a linear diff for ticket time range, which means that we take the first commit and the last commit and all the commits that are, are between them, which may or may not uh, have commits from another tickets too, uh, because there might be commits for the other, other tickets too. We, we uh, first of all, we try to figure out 
from each commit that which files were changed within this commit and then sum them up with git diff numstat and git diff name status we get a change status for the file and the, and the what rows had, has been changed. So then we can uh, use uh, meld as a diff tool. Uh, I like meld because it, it is uh, capable of doing dir diff so I can uh, uh, diff to directories directly not just file by file. So uh, it is uh, pretty easy just to uh, use git diff tool from the commit range and uh, print out what files were changed. Uh, it looks like this so so if I run run a linear comparison for this ticket uh, it shows that all these files has been added to the git uh, in commits that uh, were uh, belonging to this ticket. Uh, list is, is uh, below the line before the, the mail to is opened. Uh, in meld there can be also files that has been changed by other tickets. So uh, this, this works pretty nicely if the uh, time range of the ticket is, uh, is uh, 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 short, but it, if it's long, okay, then there is a noise a lot. Then there is other way around, uh, which is cherry picking. Uh, Basically, we have the same idea as, as, previ as previously that we have first ticket and the last ticket. But instead of getting the whole range, we start, uh, create two branches uh, for a commit before the first commit. So, so that we have a, sit a commit that has no change or changes for this ticket. And then we uh, leave the first branch as it is and for the second branch we try to cherry pick all the commits that has been uh, belonging to t this uh, ticket and uh, if we are lucky it is success but if we are unlucky somebody has changed the same rows or same files in, uh, in uh, uh, another ticket then it might fail. So this uh, uh, works better when it works but sometimes it fails. Uh, so here is a demo uh, also about this. So we had uh, uh, two commits for uh, uh, ticket 3 and uh, in between of the commits uh, for ticket 3 we had a, a commit for ticket 4. Then we can cherry pick those trees. Those, all, all those three co uh, commits change the same file but as th they are, they are changing different uh, rows in it there was no conflict and it, it could be automated. Uh, and so yet again in the uh, in, uh, upper side of the screen there is the, the, the uh, mail to showing the diff that what, had, what has changed. So uh, this was pretty much it. Uh, uh, if you have anything to ask, uh, you can uh, ask me in the chat uh, or, or contact me in Twitter if the chat's, chat is some, so for some reason is not responsible or something like that. And if you are uh, interested in making these codes your own, then there is a github.com uh, uh, URL where those examples and my review scripts uh, are. If you have any ideas how to enhance them, you can Rise issues or contact me. Uh, but that was it. Thank you for listening.